Can you put a value on a life? Yes. 100 gold coins. It seems like awesome stuff is always bad for you. But do video games fall into that category? Let's get to the bottom of this. Uh. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. Skyrim Shuffle. If you can't do a Skyrim Shuffle, I can teach you. In this installment, we're counting down the five most intriguing facts we could find out about the effects that video games have on physical health, mental health, and behavior. Ah! <laughs> Number five. Exercise video games are legit exercise. Well, you're gonna feel stupid when you've got a hot best friend who got hot playing Wii Fit, and everyone else in the world gets hot because they play Wii Fit, and you're sitting on your fat ass playing Grand Theft Auto. Then what are you gonna say, huh, fatty? According to published research, playing games like Wii Fit for 20 minutes per day is enough to meet the requirements of the American College of Sports Medicine for maintaining and improving cardiovascular health. That's good news for two reasons in particular. First, according to a pilot study from the University of California at San Diego, playing Wii sports games a few times per week can drastically reduce depressive symptoms in older adults. Secondly, a 2011 study proved that playing a virtual soccer game like FIFA makes you significantly hungrier than just resting, despite the fact that you're really only moving your fingers when you play FIFA, leading to increased unnecessary calorie intake. Given much of the world's problem with obesity, exercise video games seem like a great idea. Too bad nobody plays them anymore. We Fit's gonna make everyone in the world hot. <laughs> Number four, misbehaving kids play a lot of games. A study from Oxford University looked at the gaming habits of children and found a strong link between long periods spent playing video games and behavioral problems. You got skills. But Oxford isn't totally anti-video game. The study doesn't try to blame the bad behavior on the games, and does note that kids who played co-op games had fewer problems with their peers. O'Doyle rules! <laughs> Thanks a lot, O'Doyle. Nice meeting you. Also, the study said that playing violent games didn't seem to make any difference in the children's behavior. But more on that later. Number three, some games improve your memory, but not all of them. A study in 2013 had graduate students play Fruit Ninja, Starfront Collision, Modern Combat, and Cut the Rope. Only the Cut the Rope players showed significant improvements in concentration, memory, and the ability to switch fluidly between tasks. So it's a good thing that gaming can improve your memory, because it might also destroy it. The link is only theoretical and is not proven, but gamers rely on a part of the brain called the caudate nucleus more than non-gamers do. This dependency causes reduced gray matter in another area of the brain called the hippocampus. And that reduction in gray matter is associated with neurological disorders like Alzheimer's. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, I'm sorry for your loss. What loss? Number two, Rayman Raving Rabbids can treat dyslexia. This is great! And all I've done is enter my name! Thrill House! A 2009 experiment took two groups of dyslexic children and had them play the Ubisoft game Rayman Raving Rabbids. <laughs> One group played the more action-oriented, mentally demanding mini-games, while the other played the simpler ones. After a few sessions totaling 12 hours of game time, their reading abilities were measured again, and only the kids playing the more demanding games showed scores better than before. The improvements for these kids were as good or better than the results of conventional, much less fun treatments. Only kids could sit through 12 hours of these things, though. Number one, violent games do affect your behavior. So tell your folks, buy me, bone storm, or go to hell! So the question is, do violent games make you more violent in real life? I'm sorry, honey, but those games cost up to and including $70. And they're violent and they distract you from your schoolwork. There's obviously a little bit of debate on the subject, but from what we've read, the research currently points towards no. However, violent games have been found to affect behavior in a few ways. For instance, they can make gamers behave more aggressively in simulated real-life situations. Those feelings of aggression can persist at least 24 hours after playing has stopped. Also, when given access to candy, violent gamers eat on average three times more of it than non-violent gamers. That same experiment then tested the gamers to see if they'd steal some raffle tickets when nobody was around. And the violent gamers cheated eight times more than the non-violent ones. Silly. 
There's never a charge for the raffle. Even sleeping under a rock? So, do you think playing video games is good for your health overall? How have they helped you? Now, I know you love video games, and I asked the clerk which is the one every boy wants. <gasps> you got me! For more healthy top 10s and misbehaving top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. That's it? God damn it. God damn it.